Yeah, we have uh, just uh, 10 minutes, unfortunately. We have material for hours to talk, <laughs> but we will give just high-level overview. So, uh, first of all, uh, my name is Sergey Sergeyev from uh, AppDynamics Cisco. Uh, hi, I'm Ayush. I'm a principal engineer at Cisco Systems. Yeah, and um, we will talk about uh, cellular architecture and how to get it. So uh, first about App Dynamics, it's a full stack. Oops, it's a full stack observability platform. Uh, it provides insights for businesses, uh, users, applications, infrastructure, network, and security. Uh, we have SaaS deployments around the world, hundreds of billions of data points a day. So, um, and uh, let's uh, talk about server architecture and what it is. So. It's a collection of components grouped uh, from design and implementation for into deployment. Uh, it's basically independent, independently deployable, manageable, and observable. And it just provides uh, a way to split like infinitely uh, scaling problem into smaller chunks. So you uh, basically shard your customers into each cell. So it provides a way uh, to, to, to apply some upper bound for your sales scalability. And um, basically, it uh, provides a way to limit blast radius. So if something happens with one cell deployment, it affects only that part of customers. Uh, it also provides a way to reason about uh, capacity and scalability. So you can define some upper bounds for uh, each individual cell uh, scalability. Also, it is disaster recovery. It's very hard to, uh, to do disaster recovery for like a huge deployment, infinitively growing. How, how do you re recover it from disaster? So it's very hard with cell-based architecture. It can be tested, validated, so you can apply some uh, CI pipeline for your disaster recovery uh, processes. Also, it helps to move some of the heavy traffic customers to an individual cell, so they do not act as a noisy neighbors uh, for other customers. Um, and also, it minimizes resources over provisioning. So basically, you may over provision resources in one cell, but once you have enough cell deployments, so it uh, just uh, limits uh, resources over provisioning. So uh, what is a cell? So it's basically uh, over a hundred of applications. Uh, we use microservices pattern at FD. So it's a hundred, uh, over a hundred uh, of different microservices with data stores uh, and all the infrastructure and foundational components needed to run that system. Also, we have a global control plane which hosts basically global services needed uh, for cells to operate, uh, like a global event bus uh, to communicate and uh, orchestrate tenant provisioning or tenant management. Uh, also, we have the management cell itself, which uh, uh, does basically fleet management. So it provisions new cells, it manages and monitors basically uh, the rest of the cells. And um, just uh, Again, to highlight the scale, it's hundreds of applications uh, contributed by dozens of engineering teams. So it's a, quite a lot of things going on in each individual cell. And uh, with this, I will, <laughs> I usually will yes. provide more details yeah. about uh, yeah. the GitOps side of the things. Yes. So we have a single management cell, which is responsible to provision all of our tenant cell and the control cell. So to add a tenant cell, you basically add something like a uh, manifest, something like this, where you say which control cell and to deploy in which cloud, which region, the number of tenant cell and things like that. So what it does is that once you commit this to our main GitOps repository, the flux in the management cell will, re will reconcile and that will kick in the cross plane in that management cell. That will actually create all the base Kubernetes, base cloud resources like the VPC, the subnet, the security group, and the Kubernetes cluster itself. It will also create the node group based on the profile that has been provided here. And once the cluster is up and running, it will 
basically uh, bootstrap uh, so once the cluster is up and running it will bootstrap flux in the cluster and it with the cluster path that is provided here so the cluster path that was provided in the cluster in the cell creation manifest is uh, is a path to the cluster configuration so cluster configuration is a way to encapsulate all the components that go in a cluster or that needs to be installed in a cluster this necessarily doesn't need needs to be the kubernetes resources this can be any of the cloud resources that need, needs to be provisioned in that cell so in our case so this it's like a layer cake so at start it's like a layer cake and like the reconciliation order is from bottom to top and the layer above is depending on the uh, from for the services which are being provided from the layer below so it start with our foundational components like the helm repositories the foundational teams definitions the gateways and the service mesh once the foundational components are created we start adding the security components security and compliance components like kiverno and opa so this ensures that everything that's added after this point is compliant with our security and compliance policies so after all the security components are good and ready we add the we onboard the teams the in the onboarding teams it basically the namespace the service account are back so this gives us a very tight control on what the teams can or cannot do in the cell so after the teams are added we add the infrastructure components like the cross plane the monitoring stuff so uh, and this infrastructure component it is used by the shared data stores and the application components in shared data stores we have kafka and droid so after the shared data stores are created which are shared by multiple teams the application components are being reconciled and we also encapsulate all the all the components that application needs like the private their private data stores their ingress their egress rule and any of the security components that is specific to their applications so and in at at dynamics we use a, a mono repository and so um, we use a mono repository so a flux basically reconciles from a directory in the cluster overlay which is it which is basically uh, which is basically derived from the base cluster overlay uh, we have two flavors of our deployment basically the ci flavor and the cloud flavor so in the ephemeral flavor what we do is we provision uh, containerized workload and if you basically spin up the same application in a cloud environment you will spin up postgres uh, you will spin up actual cloud resources give you an example let's say you have a application which is deployed and uh, let's say you have an application which needs redis so if you deploy it in a ephemeral cluster it will use redis container but if you deploy the same application in a kubernetes or in, in aws environment it will spin up uh, elastic cache so uh, so uh, yeah so this gives us a uniform pattern to deploy the whole of saas app dynamics platform or part of it in a ci cd local or production environment and app dynamics hiring come join us and uh, see you <laughs> in the break yeah we we made it yeah, each each slide deserves like a half an hour talk <laughs> so we just provided uh, some high level overview meet us at the break uh, in the hall so we will be Happy to chat with you in more details to answer your questions. And if you're excited about uh, what we do, uh, come join us. <laughs> Abdi is hiring. So, and thank you so much for coming. So many people excited to see some back to normal. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>